as we've really been building out our own internal um, software-defined data center, um, you know, we're dealing with a very complex set of services. If you think about an entire uh, ecosystem to deliver, say, back office applications, you're thinking, you're talking about things like your ERP system, your business intelligence, your middleware, your identity management, um, your portals environment, and so on and so forth. Very complex set of applications and services that are tightly integrated together. Um, Previously, prior to, you know, in more of a, call it a traditional model, presuming we'd already secured compute and storage and, and so on, uh, the, the time to, to deliver a fully baked instance where we could now start to develop, uh, you know, develop new capability or functionality was somewhere in the region of about, uh, about three, three to four weeks and probably in the region of about 20 to 25 people were responsible for building and, and, and you know, building that environment. Now we're in the region of about 36 hours and five people. Um, our goal is to actually get that to 24 hours and um, you know, maybe, maybe in the two to three people range. That's certainly something over the last year as we've progressed one step at a time, um, we've gone from you know, three weeks to two weeks to one week, we're at 36 hours. We're now able to provision um, not only compute, but the services that run on the compute in a very fast, efficient way. Um, we're also able to deprovision in a very fast, efficient way. And what that's allowing us to do now is actually get better utilization out of the infrastructure that the services are running on, as opposed to the infrastructure being held up while the services are sitting there idle because you don't know how long it's going to take to get it back. We're finding a much more efficient utilization of the compute as well. Those are really dramatic numbers. I'm very impressed with what you're saying. Yeah. Are there specific areas of uh, software tools that you're using to actually achieve this. We don't need to go into the specific product, sure. but just general areas yeah. that you use for the management. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, really it all starts with virtualization, of course, and you of have course. to, you know, abstract, ultimate, and pull in order to even build the foundation for a software-defined data center. So what we've, what we've been able to do is take, um, you know, our own, our own um, capabilities and build really a, a platform that allows us to manage the, the, the provisioning and the building out of these, uh, you know, these services. And are you using some type of management tools also to, to meter what's happening, to look at the operations, to possibly even do uh, show back, charge back? looking at how those workloads are, are comparing, say, to what you can get off of a public cloud. Yeah, absolutely. So we, okay. we, we're now, it's now giving us much better insights into what it costs to serve. What does it cost for us to provision, say, a, a virtual machine? Um, and what does it cost us to provision and run a set of services that run you know, on, those, uh, on those virtual machines? And what it's allowed us to do is really have a more of a, as I talked about earlier, moving from uh, operating and behaving more like a SaaS company internally within mm -hmm. your own IT organization, how do we start delivering IT as a service, which is really around buying services, subscription-based, which is more OPEX, uh, if more OPEX based than it is CAPEX based. And in order to do that, we've really had to understand our cost structures much better and the cost to serve so that we can do that show back. Um, and it's really allowed us to provide the visibility into what it does cost to actually, um, actually um, you know, build and run and manage these services. Now, one thing I've been finding as we work with the Accelerated Advisory Services customers is there's quite a tendency for them to, to compare their internal total cost of ownership at a workload level to what they would get from the public cloud space. And they're constantly competing more of a uh, service offering as well so that they know that their internal customers can always go out to a public cloud and get a, uh, get a solution. Yeah. And for them to be viable, they have to provide a very stellar service at at least an equivalent cost or lower. Are you seeing those same pressures? I don't know if it's the same pressures, and I, and I think that a lot of the cost comparisons and the models I've seen aren't truly apples to apples comparisons. So where a lot of, uh, you know, an Amazon web service is, you know, infrastructure is a service. How much is it going to cost me to rent a certain amount of compute and storage? Really, that's only one part of the entire supply chain for delivering delivering a service. You have to think about, okay, who is doing the tenant operations? And what's involved in tenant operations? And what are those costs? And how does that compare? And sometimes that's where you know you, you don't even get those services. So it's, you know, then you, then you have to mm -hmm. provision services that run on top of, of, of those VMs. And, right. and, and what types of services are they? And unless you've got a true apples to apples across the infrastructure components, the tenant operations components, components 
and the services, then it's very hard to um, figure out exactly apples to apples, cost to cost. Also, you have to think about how you protect different types of workloads. For instance, we covet and manage our production and mission critical um, workloads very differently than we say we do our dev test workloads. Our dev test is where we need more agility, um, you know, more flexibility, like you get from a software from the software defined data center. So there's, it's a little bit less about cost, um, and it's about the cost of, of directly, and it's a little bit about the cost of that agility for those particular types of workloads. And that's where it gets a little bit more challenging to get a, a cost comparison. But certainly we are at a point where we can decompose the costs to deliver those services, and we can start to do those comparisons with the public cloud services as well. Mm -hmm.